In this lesson, we'll learn what is a constitutive model and where does it find its usage in engineering applications. Studying material behavior has its advantages in engineering. Selecting an appropriate material is very much a part of the design process. The choice of a material is driven by several factors such as the cost, manufacturability, performance, availability, and several others. A design engineer must consider all these factors in picking a material for the application that they are working on. There are several physical factors of materials that one may consider, such as mass density, their thermal and electrical conductivity, mechanical strength and behavior, and the corrosion and wear resistance. One must understand how the materials behave in order to pick the right material. In this lesson, we'll focus on the structural properties of the materials. Every material, when subjected to external forces, resists deformation. The source of these forces comes from the internal forces that are developed in the material at an atomic scale. Due to the difference in structure between different materials, each material tends to offer a distinct amount of resistance when subjected to same amount of deformation. For instance, if we take two samples of same shape and dimensions, but one made of structural steel and the other made of neoprene rubber, fix it on one end and attach a dead weight on the other end, the rubber bar expands a lot more than structural steel. This is because the rubber must undergo large deformation before its internal forces can support the dead weight, whereas the steel bar generates the same amount of forces for a very little deformation. A mathematical equation that can be used to capture this physical behavior in the form of equations is nothing but a constitutive model or a material model. Now, let's take an example of this car. It's an assembly of several functioning components that are made of different types of materials that are vastly different in their physical behavior. For instance, the chassis is supposed to hold the whole structure of the car together and protect the vehicle in the event of a crash. For this reason, it's made up of high strength steel, so it can resist deformation. On the other end of the spectrum, we have tires that are made of rubber. This is because the tires are expected to deform during the motion to provide proper traction and to reduce the bumpiness of the ride. While the common sense guides us in selecting hard steel for chassis and rubber for tires, not all selections are straightforward. For instance, the internal combustion engine of the same car is subjected to very harsh mechanical and thermal environment and the material must withstand the wear and tear. So, how does one decide whether to choose, say, cast iron or stainless steel for manufacturing the engine block. Although both the materials have similar mechanical behavior, their physical strengths are significantly different. Due to this reason, there is a need for the engineers to be able to both characterize and quantify the material properties. Or in other words, there is a need to represent the material behavior in a mathematical form. And this form is nothing but the constitutive model or the material model. A typical constitutive model is the relationship between the stress developed in the material when it's subjected to certain amount of strain. The simplest form of such a relation is the linear elastic material behavior, which is governed by the Hooke's law. 
most metals and many other materials at small deformations follow this law. Of course, this model is very limiting in replicating more complex behavior, but it's very useful for most common engineering applications. There are many more advanced constitutive models that can mimic complex deformation and their complexities vary from the detailed behavior that we are trying to capture. For now, let's focus on linear elastic model as per Hooke's law. 